such as cabbage, onions, and broccoli. Here are the recommendations for breastfeeding. You can see that according to the American Dietetic Association, as well as the American Academy for Pediatrics, human breast milk is the preferred feeding choice for infants for at least the first six months of life. Breastfeeding should occur ideally for the entire first 12 months of life, along with appropriate weaning foods. The primary source of nutrients for the infant for the first 6 to 12 months is breast milk or formula. Protein requirements are highest during the first 4 months of life when growth is the most rapid. <clears throat> Breastfed infants may need iron supplements after 4 months. Um, it is stored in their liver and utero as well as fluoride supplements. So we want to have their blood levels checked. Formula fed infants can receive their iron supplementation in their formula. Um, they, will, they will also need fluoride supplementation if it's not present in the drinking water used to uh, mix the formula. And then um, after um, food uh, is introduced in the diet, you can switch the formula to non-iron, um, um, high in iron uh, formula. Vitamin D supplementation is um, often needed um, if, uh, they get, if the infant gets little or no sunlight exposure um, because it can cause rickets. Baby bottle tooth decay. This is found in 5 to 15 percent of children and it's because the infant is allowed to fall asleep with a bottle of milk or juice. As they, um, their suck and swallow action diminishes as they start to fall asleep, the liquid's going to pool in their mouth and mixes with the bacteria and then that's going to increase the acidity in the mouth causing tooth decay. If a bottle is needed at bedtime, it should be water only, but you should really wean from a bottle as soon as the child can drink from a cup. A very important um, question to know is when to introduce cow's milk. It cannot be given to infants before their first year of age is less digestible, it's, um, it stresses immature kidneys, it can cause dehydration because it doesn't have enough iron but too much sodium and protein. So we want to reduce the risk of developing a milk allergy. Um, and then another thing we want to do is that we want to know when do we switch from whole milk, which is what we would start out after age one. Um, we would want to re use reduced fat or, or non-fat milk after age two and before age three. So from age one to two, it's going to be whole milk. Somewhere before their third birthday, but after their second birthday, we're going to introduce reduced fat milk. <clears throat> Rice milk or soy milk are low in protein, calcium, and vitamin D and are not as nutrient dense compared to breast milk, formula, or cow's milk. So, for example, if you gave your child rice milk, they may also get rickets from a vitamin D deficiency. When to introduce solid foods. The ideal food for the first four to six months is exclusive use of breast milk. Iron is a nutrient of most concern when solids are first introduced. You can see that we are going to start them um, somewhere between four to six months. However, if there is any family history of food allergies, you would not want to start before six months. The child has to be ready to handle solid food, so they need to be able to sit up with some support, be able to move their jaw, lips, and tongue, and show, show interest in what the family is eating. So here's how to start food. The first food we want to do is we want to do iron fortified cereals because remember at about four months is where we see the um, iron stores in the infant's um, body being depleted. So the first solid food that we're going to introduce is going to be iron fortified cereal. You can see we only want to do one food at a time and letting four to five days in between new foods so therefore we can determine if the child is having an intolerance or an allergy to that food. If, for example, I gave them strawberry banana yogurt, 
Um, I wouldn't be able, for the first time, I wouldn't be able to tell if it was the strawberries, the banana, or the yogurt that was causing the issue. And now I wouldn't, and now I'd want to avoid all of those because while the first time they have an allergic reaction, it might be mild, the second time they're introduced to that food is going to be much more severe. Um, what does an allergic reaction look like? It's going to be like upper respiratory distress, skin reactions, like a rash. Then you can read through here on your own and see what the, are the, what are the progression of foods that we want to do here. Um, and then lastly, I did put up here too, the child cannot get any honey until after 12 months of age because there's a, rich, a risk for botulism. All right, energy um, intake needs for the infant. So adequate energy intake will be reflected in satisfactory gains in height and weight. We will plot these numbers on a growth chart and as long as they are making adequate gains, then we know that they're getting enough food. We used to have specific numbers about how many calories per kilogram and based on their life, but we, um, how old they are, we, that is no longer um, practice. If the infant is not gaining weight based on the growth charts, this child has failure to thrive. That would be the nursing diagnosis we would use there. Lastly, we do not want to place any infant on a low-fat diet.